Are you happy? Yeah. At age 21, I thought I had everything to be happy. I had a proper education, a very secure job in a bank, and shortly after, I even got a loving husband. I was going down a very conventional track, one that my parents valued a lot. At 27, my wake-up call, a short, simple, quiet question that my husband asked me hit me like a stroke and left me speechless. Hala, are you happy? I didn't know what to answer. I had never thought of the question. I thought I'd be happy going down a very secure track. And then he went on saying, well, if you're happy, that's great, but you don't look happy. You look tired, and you're becoming boring. <laughs> well, obviously, I had to do something to change. 27 was far too early in age to become boring. But I had spent too many hours and years sitting at a desk doing an unexciting job. So my crazy self had died long ago. I couldn't do anything radical. I did as safe a move as I could do in the direction of change. I left my job and went back studying to earn an MBA at MIT. <laughs> I arrived in Boston in 1999 in the middle of a storm. It was the internet bubble. Everybody was starting a company. There was a viral energy there, and the viral energy caught me and made me want to start a company too. I just needed an idea. <laughs> well, this is where my previous experience helped. I had spent so many hours working for a bank that I knew that banks spent too much money on nearly everything especially on telecommunications. So I formulated the idea that I could calculate the number that banks spend on their telecom bill, and that I could reduce that number, hence adding value to banks. And I explained how I could do it, and I submitted this idea to the MIT 100K business plan competition. Thanks to the competition, my idea gathered a team, the team got funded, we got clients, and we even grew to 10 employees. I was officially labeled an entrepreneur, and my story made it to the front page of the Boston Globe. For my husband... <laughs> for my husband, I was no longer boring. <laughs> I was crazy. And for my parents, too. The point I'm trying to make is that very often we have the feeling that we have our passion on one side and the secure job on the other side, and that these two are parallel tracks that will never intersect. They can intersect if you are put in the right environment, with the right support, the right guidance, and you get the viral energy, then it becomes only natural that you quit the secure job and follow your passion. You make those two, two tracks intersect. <laughs> Why did I become an entrepreneur? Because I was at MIT during the internet bubble. I was in the right environment at the right time. It's like people in Silicon Valley. They have the right ecosystem, they get the energy, and uh, you know they want to start businesses. Well, now I can... I can hear you. You're telling me we're not in Silicon Valley. <laughs> we're in the Arab region. We're in Lebanon, for God's sake. Halt al balad you know. Well, how can I start a Google from here? That's it. That's exactly it. That, that's the question I asked myself six years ago. How can I help people? How can I make it possible for people to start a Google from here? The answer? Create the right environment. Start a business plan competition. In 2005, I started the MIT Arab Business Plan Competition. I wanted every Arab 
who had a good business idea, who had a passion to get help like I was 10 years ago, and to follow his passion and create a company. Helping entrepreneurs became my passion. Since then, we've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs, and actually 12,000 of them, or 4,000 teams, apply every year from 17 Arab countries to the MIT Arab Business Plan competition. And more than that, we've inspired many to help entrepreneurs. Many uh, institutions or individuals are now part of this big ecosystem dedicated to helping entrepreneurs. Well, we're clearly not in Silicon Valley, but we're getting there. In fact, we're even attracting people from Silicon Valley to the region. The winner of last year's competition, Sherif Mustafa from PT Screens, was approached by a Silicon Valley venture capitalist to invest in his software company. He has a software that connects you to people who are doing the same search as you on Google. Okay, so now you tell me, okay, Hala, let's assume I can get the right support. Where do I get the viral energy from? Well, something happened on January 4th, 2011. An entrepreneur, Mohamed Bouazizi, got so frustrated because he could not grow his green grocer business because of bureaucratic limitations that he set himself on fire. More than a political revolution, he started an energy revolution. He unleashed the energies of the young Arabs and inspired them to go to the streets to demonstrate for freedom, but also for a job or at least to get the opportunity to create their own jobs. Let me tell you, there is no region in the world that has as much energy as the Arab region today. There is no region in the world where the level of expectations of the youth are as high as in the Arab region today. And no government will be able to match that. Why? Because governments do not create jobs, and another thing governments cannot do is provide us with role models. In the Arab region, our role models used to be political leaders, and now they're falling one by one. We want entrepreneurs to be our new role models. In fact, we need 50 new role models. We really need 50 entrepreneurs starting 50 new businesses today that will create 10 million jobs, which is exactly what is required to save our economy and provide jobs to every single Arab that comes to the job market every year. We need 50 companies starting today that will become, in 10 years, $51 billion companies, 50 Fadi Randur, building today the 50 Aramex of tomorrow. And each one of these companies works on average with 200 suppliers, which means that those 50 entrepreneurs will inspire 10,000 other entrepreneurs to work with them as suppliers, as HR consultants, IT consultants, media consultants. And these 10,050 companies will employ people that will aspire to a better life. They will use transportation, food, go to the gym, all together they will create these 10 million jobs. So what else do we need those 50 entrepreneurs for? We need them because entrepreneurs introduce the new into our lives. Innovations brought to market by entrepreneurs have changed our lives. From the telephone to computers to internet services to the new restaurant down the corner to your new sports training method to air conditioning which is so important in the Arab region. What will our life look like 10 years from now? It will be changed significantly by the companies that will be created over the next two to three years. And hopefully, we'll have 50 of them in the Arab region. President Kennedy inspired people to go to the moon by saying we're not doing it because it's easy. We're doing it because it's hard. If you're put in the right environment, following your passion becomes a natural decision, but it is definitely a hard track. In fact, it is so intense that I have learned three things about what it takes to become an entrepreneur. I don't know why everybody learns three things when they... <laughs> it's always three, it's never two or four. So I've learned three things. Work like a slave. 
Command like a king. Create like a god. Work like a slave because it took me everything from cleaning the floor of the office before the CEO of a new client comes in to doing an all-nighter on a Saturday evening when everybody else was partying to become an entrepreneur. This is what it took me. And you have to get ready for an egoless trip because there's one thing that dies when you work like a slave, it's your ego. And that's very good news because you don't need it for anything. Command like a king, because it does take some leadership skills to start, start a business. There is very little you can do on your own. And engaging and motivating people to work with you requires as much leadership skills as a king during war times. Create like a god. In today's environment, everything is open to competition. The minute you start thinking of a new idea, someone else is already working on it. As Thomas Friedman puts it, the world is flat. There is no place to hide. So you'd better shoot for the moon and create like gods from day one. And once you've created your own company, once you're your own boss, my God, what a feeling of satisfaction and pride. I was rehearsing this talk in the car and my daughter heard me use the word God and she told me, you know what? God must have been an entrepreneur because he created us and everything else. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> Kids are so smart, really. She's seven. <laughs> okay, so where are we now? We're in the Arab region. We have some support if we want to start a business. And let me tell you, I think we have good support. We have the viral energy. So what are we waiting for? Let's just do it. Let's just be those 50 entrepreneurs that are going to save our economy. Let's just be those 50 people that choose the other track, the crazy one, the road less traveled, the one where you quit the secure job and follow your passion, create a company, create jobs, and by doing so, discover another passion of yours, your passion to change the world. I make it sound easy, not because it is easy, but because when I followed my passion, I got so much energy from my inner self that I didn't feel the pain. I didn't feel the effort, and I discovered myself along the way. And you know what? I am happy. And and actually, I get to ask him the question now. I get to ask my husband, sitting over there, are you happy? <laughs> because if you're happy, if you're happy, that's great. But you don't look happy. You look tired, but there's one thing you've never been, you've never been boring. <laughs>